In this video, we're going to work on creating three different charts on one single screen here. So basically what we do is this. You can see here the data here is consistent here. So we're going to match these data here by using a drawing method. And of course, what we also have is we have another pie chart besides it, which has this own unique data. So what we're going to do is basically we're going to create two, uh, three charts, two of each, which are dependent on the same data without repeating the same data, and one that has unique data in itself. So this will be a very useful practice because many might struggle how to put in multiple charts on a page. In this video, we're going to answer one of the viewers' question, which is how to have multiple charts in one page with Chart.js. So this is a good question because many might struggle with this one. First of all, let me show you where this question came from. This was from one of my other videos where we're covering about how to customize the tooltip data in Chart.js. And in here, if you scroll down, you can find here the question from Gerardo Martinez Esparza. And he asked the following. How can I have different, different charts in different canvas, but in the same screen? So basically on one page, multiple canvas with different charts. charts. So, well, let's explore. And he said here as well, by the way, I like your video. Oh, thank you very much as well. And thank you for asking this question. So let's start and explore how to do this. So what we want to do here basically is we want to have, let's say two or three canvas. So there will be a total of three charts on the same page. All right, to do this, first of all, let's start and break it down here by getting the standard uh, default chart here. Go to chartjs.org and then I'm using the latest version, which is 3.4.1 as of now. So I'm going to grab this, we'll copy this, all right? Then I will paste this in here. Once I did that, I need to go back here to the chart.js documentation, click here on getting started, and then here on the sub menu, you will see here the canvas ID, and you have also the chart.js library. So I'm going to grab that one first, paste it in here, and then here this, I'll just copy this and remove this excess here, because this one have a nested div in here. In this one, I'll give it a class, because I want to make sure that this has a fixed width so in here we can say chart box and then here as a class dot chart box and here well since we will have three charts we can put them all beside each other so i will say here let's say uh, 300 pixels with 300 pixels i have to see i'm not sure this will be sufficient enough but we'll see later on so we grab this here put a proper indentation Save that and see if we have our chart. All right, we have our chart. It's nice and small, beautiful. What we're going to do is here first is to break it down. I want to break it down in multiple blocks. We have the, the setup block. And later on, I will show you a trick if you want to use the same data as well. So we have the setup block. We have the config block. And we have here, of course, the render initialization block. So let's put it in here. So in the setup block, we have the constant for data equals curly braces. And in between here, we're going to grab the data info. So that's basically all of this here of the data sets, or sorry, uh, data sets, including the label here from data. So everything within here, cut it out. And then we paste this in here. All right. So once we have that one done, that's the first one. The next one, what I want to do is the config, so we say constant config equals. And in here, what we're going to do is we're going to grab all of this part here. So these are the building blocks, the type, data, and the options. Cut it out, paste it in here. All right. And then here, what I need to do is I need to make your comma for data, referring back to this part here. All right. Final part is the render block. And the render block will be a constant with the name of ch my chart and you can give it anything as well and later on we have to work with this so pay attention afterwards i'm going to grab this here get the document by uh, id element id which is this one here and then comma here and it's a config because we want to get all of this data and this is all referring to each other so once we did this here we need to check here 
Oh, sorry, I'm uh, I'm going too fast. Here we say new because this is of course a constructor. Sorry about that. Uh, all right, so we grab this parentheses. You can see here parentheses. We're not using curly braces here. This one needs parentheses because we're creating here a constructor in charge in JavaScript. So we we nest these between the constructor parentheses. Here, comma. Then we can delete all of this, save this, and refresh. Everything works fine here. All right. So how can we create another chart? Basically, remember here, we have a constructor here, but this constructor is referring to a specific ID. And you have this constant here. If you want to create something fast, we can basically do it like this. We're going to copy this, paste in here. And then we say here the ID, this could be maybe another line chart. So let's say this will be a line chart. So I'll just give it a line chart ID name. And all we have to do here basically is this. We're going to copy this part. I'll say here, render line chart. But if I just only do like this, we need to change the name as well. Because if we don't do this, you get a error. So I'm going to grab the line chart name here. Equals this, equals that. Save. Refresh. There you are. So now we have them. But of course, this is not a line chart. The reason why is basically this. We use the configuration here that was here of this part, which is indicating a type of bar. And then we have also all the data. However, what is very nice here is we have the same structure. So we could reuse the same data without doing any adjustments, basically. So maybe you want a line chart here. But to do this, we need to grab this configuration. And then in here, we're going to put in here the configuration. And I will just say this is the line chart data or line chart info here the config this will be config line but basically here all we can put in here is because here number two because this here is a constant as well so it's in number two here as well changes to line and save refresh as you can see now we created a line chart here nicely it's the same data that we had basically in here so the final part is the following what we're going to do now is just to add one more and let's create one which is completely unique so you probably figured out that now this constant is essential but also here the canvas as well this is all this always have to be unique because if you have the same constant name you get an error so what we're going to do here is now the same let's make here for example a pie chart so we're going to say a pie and then in this pie chart here, we're going down here and basically here, we need to change then here as well, everything. And to make this pie chart, same methodology. We can reuse our data or we can change our data with something else. Maybe we want to have completely new data compared to what we have here, which is fine. All we do is basically, you can just grab this, say your const data. And I'll just call this here our pie chart. Put it in here. But remember, we're using now here constant data. What do you know about constant in, in JavaScript? Constant cannot be reused twice. Yes? So this must be unique. So we can just say number two or, or data pie. And here I'm just going to put in some data. I will reduce it. I just make only three data points here. So it's easy to spot the difference. And I'll just give some different numbers here, 10, 13, and this will be uh, number 9. Remove the excess of colors. We don't need any extra colors. We have this. All right. So now we have our data pie. So, of course, what is the next part here? Because this is just the data of our pie chart. Data of pie chart. The next one, of course, is the configuration. So config pie. So what we're going to do here is we say your constant, and this constant must be unique as well. We're not allowed to use again config. So we can say here config pi. So we're indicating it because it needs to be unique. And then in here, semicolon. And here we could do anything else. Basically, we could just grab all this. I'm going to grab this, and then after we're going to do some tiny adjustments. Put it in here. We have the type, the type must be pi. Then we have the data. Well, the data not right now is not data because this is a constant but it's data pi so we're going to grab this one here we can put it in here or we could even do it like this one or the other this might be even better because right now it's not identical in name 
to avoid any issue. So we need data pi, so referring to this specific constant. And then next, well, I'm going to remove the scales here. We don't need this because this is a uh, pie chart. Pie chart doesn't use any scales, so we can leave the options as blank. And finally, here of course is the render or init of pie chart. So what we do here, constant. What's the constant name? Well, the constant name will be consistent with what we have here in our third canvas, which is the pie, uh, pie chart as ID. So you're just going to get this one here, say constant pie chart equals, and then here, new chart, we can create again a constructor, but then in this case, this constructor will get basically this here. And say here, document, dot get element by id and the id name is of course the pie chart we have here grab that in and then put a comma and then what we want to do is we want to grab now our configuration pie which is this one here so just grab this and say config pie all right save this and once we did this refresh oh i guess we have a tiny issue here uh argument missing i guess this is not allowed to do sorry this should be just config pi which will automatically grab this save that there we are now we have that here we have the data let's see all these data points are fine i wonder if this is possible save that refresh there you are that is not possible let me explain why in ex6 yeah so in javascript ex6 they had a simplified version of this. If this object would be equal to the name, I mean the constant had the same name as the object, so there would be data, data, that's basically what we had. This data here was a constant of data, remember that we did here above, this one here. Uh, let me check this one, because here constant data equals the data. So if the object name or the namespace of the object is data and the constant equals data we can just say data comma so that's basically the reason why here data comma did not work here because we had a problem here it says oh well if you would do this this is fine but if you do data pi the object was not called data pi it's called data and then this one equals the data pi of course so if you would do this this is the reason why the pi chart here doesn't show but if we eventually say here, data column, data pi as constant, then it works. Very important, don't get mistaken by this one. Here, you might say, well, why is this one? Because here, config was not equal config here. Because there was basically no config. If we look at here, the structure here, the config is just basically these parts here by default. These are just the data points it's or these are individual object name uh, na objects or namespaces. So these are individual. Just put it in here. So this was not really config equals config, but it's just specifically this part here in the chart is being written. So I hope that was a bit clear. And this also explains the differences. So I want to make sure that this is really clear. But if you still struggle with the understanding, let me know. I'll explain it one more time or more in depth however this is the most important one so if you're using the structure that i'm showing you always now instead of the standard that we have here in the chart js here where you can just break it down but then you have of course a huge chunk of text and if you have to loop this multiple times it would be not that useful especially if you have one chart or one data point or the data that is very consistent in that case this is the even more efficient way to do it most of the time and besides the charges documentation is moving towards this however if you still have questions and if you're maybe confused about this part here let me know i'll re explain it or i will explain it again thank you for watching this video and i hope you enjoy it and if you enjoy this video you probably will enjoy this one as well and if you're interested in charges check out in the description box the link directing to my Chart.js course where you can learn everything about Chart.js. And finally, of course, make sure you subscribe to my channel.